Hi, Phil Aston here from Now Spinning Magazine with another unboxing video. And this video is kind of like related, well, it's very much related to a review I did of this by David Hepworth, where I looked at a double album featuring 24 tracks, which focused on four themed sides, looking at the music from the 1970s. That review went down really well. Even Mr. Hepworth watched it. Thank you, David. Um, but many of you went off and realised that not only was there this version, there was also a four CD version with 70 plus tracks on it. So far more tracks than the vinyl version. And I have to agree, having now got the CD version, this really is the package to get. And at between 17 and 22 pounds, um, it's absolute bargain. So let's have a look inside the package and then I'll give you a summary at the end. As I said in the introduction, I've recently reviewed this, the Deep 70s by David Hepworth, a compilation album of 24 tracks across two LPs. And many people in the comments talked about discovering this, which was the four CD version. Having a quick look at 70 plus tracks on the back of the list when I looked at this online, I felt that I had to cover this as it is such a great compilation. So I'm just going to go through um, the package itself. It's 71 tracks over four CDs. Really well put together. A little hardback book. 36 page um, booklet as well. And just like on the vinyl album, um, uh, David goes through every single track, um, giving you some outline of what was going on, where the track's from, and, and his feelings towards it. And I think that the, this is where the CD version does trump the vinyl one. As much as I love the vinyl version, um, being allowed to have so many extra tracks, what is it, sort of 21, 17 tracks on each disc rather than just five tracks aside. Um, gives David a much better overview of going into this decade of music and also the sequencing because of that works so well. Um, but the themes are exactly the same as they were on the vinyl but of course it's more expansive in the tracks that have been picked. This is especially true on Beer Drinkers and Hellraisers and because it makes more sense now to why I mentioned when I did the early review the fact that David um, mentions name checks Montrose on the back um, and here Montrose are included with the track Rock Candy. Um, there's some brilliant um, selections here. Um, there really, really is. And um, even Atlanta Rhythm section. But I'll go through this when I talk about my summary at the end. And Blue Ball Blues, again, is really expanded with some absolutely superb tracks. And I'll talk about that in my summary as well uh, just flicking through this i hope you can see that this is a great thing to have and um you know it's about 17 20 quid uh, i think the most i've seen it for is about 22 but it's still worth every penny and a picture of david on the back so that is david Hipworth deep 70s the four cd package so that is deep 70s by david hepworth the cd version four cd 70 plus tracks compared with the 24 tracks available on the double vinyl album. Now, a lot of this makes more sense to me now. Just a little bit of backstory, which again adds to where I went before. David Hepworth mentions Montrose on here, and I think I gave him a name check saying, wow, I didn't realise, you know, um, David Hepworth was into music like that or like stuff like that. It makes more sense on this, as you've just seen, because Montrose are actually in the track listing. Why do I like this so much? It's a compilation. I mentioned this before, is that growing up in the 70s, like I did, um, I came through with Slade and T-Rex and Mother Hoople, etc. And by the time I discovered grown up rock music, the Sabbaths, the Purples and all the prog stuff and everything, punk was actually tapping at the door, which I saw initially something that was kind of preventing me or almost stopping the music I just discovered. And of course, whispering Bob Harris on the Grogu Whistle Test had kind of moved further away and Mr. Hepworth had moved in. And I kind of saw his musical taste as being like, again, could be the enemy here. He didn't seem to be to favour 
the rock music that I so much loved. The thing is that where I was back then was incredibly narrow. My field of vision for music was metal with rock either side with a little bit of jazz, a little bit of soul, very much on the outskirts of that, very much. Now, my vision is as wide as the widest screen you could possibly get. And now I am probably closer to the, the musical taste that David Hepworth has, although he was there far sooner than me. But this makes even more sense than this. I mean, this I loved and went through every track with you. I'm not going to do that now because there's over 70 of them. So I'm just going to pick out the highlights, really, um, of why this is, I feel, such a great compilation. Now, if this had been... Um, four CDs called The Hard Rock Decade or something, I may not have bought it, probably because I would have had most of the stuff that's on it. And it would have all been a bit one dimensional. Whereas what I love about this is it has sent me down various rabbit holes. And thank you all of you for your pointers towards what I should do in regards to listening to um, Roy Harper. There's more coming, I think. Um, but I love this. You've got the Young Americans, you know, many of the tracks were on the vinyl, but a lot, lot more were not. So literally five tracks aside, 17 to 20 tracks on the CDs, as you saw. Daryl Hall is different on this. Um, London Wainwright um, is is great track I wasn't that aware of. Boz Skaggs, who I really like, but this was a track that I was not that familiar with and Crazy Horse. Um, and obviously Little Feet was on there, etc. Warren Zevon uh, is on here, but it's on. I suppose I'm taking myself back to a bit of rock and roll here. Beer Drinkers and Hellraisers. It starts off the same. Freddie King, Johnny Winter and ZZ Top, oh, Jay Gale's band. We're just following the vinyl. And then Montrose Rock Candy is picked by David Hepworth to be track number five on the second CD. And as David says here, Ronnie Montrose has supplied tasteful guitar adornments to Van Morrison's Tupelo Honey. He had. He knew what was coming. When in 1973 he got his own album to do and had his own band um, made in his image, it was something very different and very heavy indeed. When I was working in a record shop at the time of the release of this first album, we only had to play one minute of this in the shop to sell multiple copies. It was this sound that producer Ted Templeman and singer Sammy Hager subsequently took to the bank with Van Halen. So true that is. That would have been the opening to Rock the Nation, wouldn't it? And I can remember how explosive that was then and how it is now and totally agree Ted Temple must have just stored this away in his memory when obviously Ronnie Montrose decided he didn't want to repeat this experiment when we came to paper money and he must have thought one day I'll find a group of kids who want to do just this and which was Van Halen but I can imagine I can visualize a record shop in the 70s where you kind of just hung around for ages and so and wondering what they might play next and going how many times did we go up to the counter and actually say what's this you playing so yeah that is a great great story george thoroughgood Eddie and the hot rods is the same but then we have canned heat um sugar bee which is a great track status quo again as i mentioned last time david won't have anything said against them flaming groovies um don nix tim buckley and the Atlanta rhythm section. I love this line where it says, um, it was still possible to do well back then. This is 1975. If you look like Hand Heat. Because <laughs> I think image for rock bands hadn't quite arrived. Imagine what the 80s, when everyone was trying to look like, it's pre-Instagram, wasn't it? Can you imagine if Instagram had been around in the 80s? No, I don't want to even imagine that really. But yeah, in the 70s, you could have a big beard and wear shapeless clothes and be in a rock and roll band. And Port Butterfield's Better Days is also on here. And then we've had Blue Ball Blues. Family are on here with My Friend the Sun. Great track. I'm, I'm really getting into Family, a band that I missed for, for ages. Uh, Ronnie Lane, Murray Head. 
Now, David doesn't mention, he mentions earlier in this package that Roger Daltrey had covered another track. And Roger Daltrey did say Ain't So Joe, uh, which I think was from uh, Me and the Boys, is it? And Murray Heads is a, is a great, obviously it's his song, but I, I do prefer the Daltrey one. But Say It Ain't So Joe is, um, is one of the best songs ever written to me. Bebop Deluxe are on here with Made in Heaven. So this is a great track. The Motors I mentioned last time. Pato, great band. Sharks, surprised. Um, that's a really good track as well. Andy Fraser from Free. That's a good choice. Good choice, Sharks. Um, the Jess Roden band. You can leave your hat on. Oh, Jess Roden. Great white soul voice. About Rogers. I mean, it's amazing. Paul Rogers was free and bad company. Jess Rodney didn't break through. So it's great that he's featured here. Terry Reid, Robert Palmer, Mott the Hoople. I wish I was your mother. Um, I think that's such a wonderful song um, from the album Mott and the Fairport Convention, Polly on the Shore. And we've also got Jilly Willie and the Red Dot Peppers, Bindu Schwartz, Roy Harper, as I mentioned last time, and Dave Edmonds. And then we're on to the Monstrous Regiment. Sandy Denny, Marion Faithful, Linda Ronstadt, New Carly Simon, Joan Armour Trading, Kate and Anna McGraggle, um, Maria Madour's different. Uh, and, well, there's two here, um, but this one especially, um, Ellen Foley, Night Out. I bought this album not because the fact that Ellen Foley sang on Bat Out of Hell, um, I bought it because the album was produced by Ian Hunter and Mick Ronson and I was so into Ian Hunter then that I just thought um, I'm going to, I was just intrigued to get it and Night Out is a great great song um, could have picked the more obvious one perhaps We Belong to the Night um, um, but Night Out Night Out is a great song to me because it, it kind of captures the fragility of her voice about the nervousness of being shy and go and easing out into the nighttime arena when you're a young person. Um, I absolutely, absolutely love that album. I must do a feature on it, really. Phoebe Snow, um, Phoebe Snow, even. Um, I, I still, I really like that. And it's, I don't have her first album. That's the one with um, every, was it? I can't remember what it's called now. Um, I've, got the, I've got it on single. Um, it's gone. It's gone from my head. It'll be in the description. And Linda Lewis, also fantastic. Valerie Carter, The Roaches, Bridget St. John, Richard, Richard and Linda Thompson, Judy Sill. Great. And it flows so well. Um, you could put this together in uh, Spotify, couldn't you? Yourself, probably. You could. But here you can sit and read David Hepworth's notes and just zoom off. Uh, dang rabbit holes of your choice that is from demon records enzo records and it's absolutely fantastic so this is where the cd wins out this is great nothing wrong with it obviously i reviewed it and loved it but this is the full works um so this is the one that I'm going to recommend, um, you know, so because it's fantastic. So that is David Hickworth, Deep 70s, four CDs in a book-shaped box set with 36-page, fully added, um, fully detailed booklet going through each track. Fantastic. So thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. Remember, music is the healer and the doctor. So keep spinning those discs. Please subscribe, share, ring that bell comment reach out to me and if you want to go a little bit further you can become a patron and support Naspinning magazine even more but until the next time take care and keep spinning those discs <laughs>